हो गया वॉल्यूम आ गया ओके पिक्चर तो नहीं आ रही अलकुम एवरीबॉडी हाँ जी आप खरीत से हैं स्टेइंग एट होम एंड सेफ एट होम ओके ओके तो वी हैव न्यू टॉपिक दैट इज इरिटेबल बॉल सिंड्रोम आई थिंक लॉट ऑफ यू वेन यू आर अंडर स्ट्रेस यू गेट सम एब्डोमिनल डिसकम्फर्ट सम चेंज इन बॉल हैबिट एंड लॉट ऑफ स्टूडेंट कम टू मी विद हिस्ट्री ऑफ डिसकम्फर्ट बेलोटिंग डिस्पेप्सिया एंड अदर जी आई डिसकम्फर्ट एंड बेलोटिंग एंड समाइम वाटरी लूज वाटरी स्टूड्स तो दिस इज वन ऑफ द कॉमन मैनिफेस्टेशन ऑफ इरिटेबल बॉल सिंड्रोम very common in uh, teenage and 20s and uh, we see lot of patients when they are under stress and uh, they have some uh, anxiety they get this uh, uh, this pathology and we will see uh, the what are the predisposing uh, factors and uh, what are the uh, treatment options and how to differentiate between ibs because it is a uh, functional disorder of the intestine it is not a disease it is a functional disorder of the intestine leading to abdominal discomfort bloating uh, sometimes diarrhea with constipation alternating constipation and diarrhea and uh, without any organic disease of the gastrointestinal tract so it is a functional disorder and we uh, try to uh, uh, enlist the uh, investigation if you have this simple ibs or some other organic disorder of the gastrointestinal tract so initially we'll see the uh, structure of the large gut we'll see uh, the definition of what is ibs epidemiology of ibs what are the causes what are the pathogenic factors and how the uh, symptoms or the patient present to you uh, with the ibs and uh, different types of ibs and how would you make a diagnosis and what investigation would you like to do to rule out any or any organic uh, intestinal disorder because it is a uh, disorder of the motility of the intestinal tract or there is some uh, hyper responsiveness of the Uh, this uh, that is uh, your brain gut axis is uh, uh, disturbed and you get these uh, gastrointestinal symptoms and we'll discuss the treatment options and uh, finally we'll see how we can have a psychosocial uh, counseling of the patient this is very very important part of the treatment because uh, your anxiety stress and sometimes even depression depression can lead to gastrointestinal symptoms <clears throat> so normally if we see the uh, colon that is a part of the large in, uh, intestine uh, your uh, lower uh, part of the gastrointestinal tract it is uh, almost 5 to 5 feet long and with a diameter of 2.5 inches that is very important because uh, sometimes if you have a inflammatory bowel disease like ulcerative colitis and you have toxic mega colon your diameter can go up to 4 to 5 inches square and you can have a perforation that is toxic mega colon and this is a normal diameter and the, uh, there is uh, uh, it is between the rectum and the uh, 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 cecum so it divided in four section ascending transverse uh, descending colon and the sigmoid colon if you see the two flexures the, this is the uh, hepatic flexion and this is the splenic flexion these are the very very important part of the large gut because sometimes if you have a uh, uh, gases they usually trap in these uh, areas and sometimes these are the patient who are having ibs or excessive gastric uh, 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 bloating they can have feeling of discomfort at the both upper flanks of the body. So, what are the functions?
the irritable bowel syndrome इसे कनेक्ट कर लें दोबारा इसको कनेक्ट हो गया था आप कहाँ जाए कनेक्टेड है वो आ रही है स्पीकर नहीं आ रहा वरना स्पीकर आता है हां अब ओके इसको नीचे कर दें मुझे पता चल जाता है ये ये ऊपर ही आएगा अभी क्योंकि आपने फुल स्क्रीन ओपन कर ली ना स्लाइड ओके ओके बस अभी के लिए ऊपर ही है ओके सो सॉरी द कनेक्शन वाज बिट सम प्रॉब्लम and uh, okay so function of the large gut basically is the waste products which are being eliminated uh, in the form of uh, waste and uh, that is pushed out in form of Hello, are you with me? Okay, okay. I'm sorry, there is some problem with the connection. Okay, so if we look at the uh, irritable bowel syndrome, it is a mixed group of abdominal symptoms. So it is a disorder. It uh, has a uh, uh, problem with the motility of the intestine. So it is a mixed group of abdominal symptoms for which no organic cause. As I told you, there is no organic cause. It is not a disease. It is a just motility disorder. and the most of the motility disorder uh, with the visceral or there is enhanced visceral perception your visceral in sensitivity is increased that is called blood brain gut axis that is disturbed due to some anxiety depression or other psychosocial disorders several diagnostic criteria exist that evaluate the symptom and the duration that is room 2 and room 3 we will discuss later on so there is a complex interaction between ibs and chronic pain syndrome these are the chronic disorders which can uh, present with aches and pains some uh, uh, other psychosocial stresses or other non specific symptoms and they are yeah, usually mixed with ibs and uh, chronic pain syndrome 
So irritable bowel syndrome is a, a motility disorder. It is not a disease. So it is a function disorder. That means the bowel simply doesn't work as it should be. That is, you have a spastic or irritable intestine, which leads to spasm and leading to abnormal discomfort. And there are different mode of presentation. We'll discuss later on. So IBS is a common disorder that affects large intestine and part of small intestine. Commonly called this. Cramping, abdominal pain, discomfort, bloating, gases, diarrhea, and constipation. Sometimes IBS is a predominantly uh, presented with constipation. Sometimes with diarrhea, or it can be alternating diarrhea and constipation. If you look at epidemic epidemics epidemiology, it is usually more common in females than males, and the age group is less than forty years. Usually, most women. 15 and 20 years, and uh, uh, 20% to 50% of gastroenterology visits are because of IBS. So it is so common disorder, and uh, uh, especially uh, if you are below 40 with the abdominal discomfort and you have alternating bowel habit in the form of constipation, diarrhea, or other uh, uh, gastrointestinal symptoms, and uh, there is a high uh, chance of IBS without any organic disorder so basically if we look at the normal physiology of the gastrointestinal tract especially the large gut so what happens is there is normal peristalsis <clears throat> which push your uh, food to down to the uh, absorptive areas and down to the rectum and it is being pushed out in the form of stool but normal peristalsis and the uh, contraction of the uh, small and large gut they help in pushing the uh, uh, your uh, food contents and later on the contraction of the colon muscles the movement of its contents is controlled by nerves and hormones and impulses in the colon muscles so if you have a IBS so this is an irregular uh, uh, contraction and relaxation of the large but and small intestine leading to spasm and uh, uh, you get abdominal discomfort. If these contractions move the contact inside the colon towards the rectum. This is, this is normal, what happens normally and what happens in IBS. So during this passage, the water and nutrients are absorbed into the body and what is left over is a stool. So this is the normal, you have a normal peristalsis and a normal contraction of the intestine. One part is contracting, other part is relaxing. They are pushing the uh, 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 food into the distal part to be evacuated in the form of stool. If any disorder takes place in the uh, motility uh, uh, of the intestine and large gut, that leads to irritable, means that your intestine become overreactive and oversensitive uh, due to some stresses and part of your uh, anxiety or irritable uh, bowel syndrome. So a few times, each contraction push the stool down the colon resulting in a bowel movement however if muscles of the colon do not contract in the right way means the contraction the peristalsis doesn't take normally and uh, the contents inside the colon do not move correctly that leads to spasm and accumulation of uh, uh, stool leading to uh, your transit time of the intestine is slowed down your water is excessively absorbed and leading to constipation and patient may become constipated and uh, with abdominal discomfort, cramps, constipation and sense of uh, incomplete stool movement or sometimes if the intestine become overreactive, they are, peristalsis are very fast, your transit time is uh, increased, they can lead to diarrhea. So it is a motility disorder, if it is slowed down, it is uh, not the normal peristalsis, it is a, a sluggish intestine, that leads to constipation because of the excessive water absorption. And if there is excessive overreactive uh, uh, gut leading to uh, uh, diarrhea and loose stools. So it is either the change in bowel habit is very, very important. Either you have constipation, you have diarrhea, or mixed alternating constipation and diarrhea. If you look at a normal colon, you can see the normal hostile pattern and the normal uh, intestine. The large gut, which looks like it, there are normal hostation and peristalsis in the large gut. If you look at the, uh, the gut of the patient with IBS, there is spastic colon. Your 
your muscular mucosa is uh, uh, spastic and there is a cramp patient will complain of uh, cramp and uh, uh, bloating and there will be a excessive uh, 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 water absorption due to constipation and patient will uh, with ibs look like your spastic colon what are the causes there are different uh, causes that can be postulated but abnormal gastrointestinal tract movement is the most important factor because it is not a disease it is not a organic disorder it is just a motility disorder a change in nervous system communication between gi and brain <clears throat> that is brain gut axis is disturbed and your uh, intestine your vista become over reactive and they, they present at abs can see motor disorders of the colon may be one part and dietary allergies especially lactose intolerance other food sensitivities they play also some part in malabsorption but that is uh, other uh, diagnosis you have to rule out if patient has a lactose intolerance like celiac disease or other uh, uh, dietary malabsorption problem so it is going to be a, a specific uh, disease but uh, in ibs it is going to be just allergies or sent over reactiveness sensitivity of some uh, food ingredient neurotransmitter imbalance decrease serotonin level this is one of the option uh, one of the <clears throat> causes and stress that is again a, a stress factor which plays important part especially uh, precipitation or exacerbation of ibs during exams during stress during even menstruation uh, periods they can be uh, worsening of your symptoms of ibs pathophysiology as we discussed it is a motility disorder so pathophysiology is not that uh, clear but many theories have been uh, postulated and uh, the exact cause is still unknown one of the postulations are there is alteration in gastric motility this is the most important uh, uh, part of the uh, pathophysiology and uh, alteration of frequency and irregularity of the luminal process we discussed earlier it is the irregularity the normal contraction or normal peristalsis or normal uh, motility of the intestine is disturbed leading to irregular contraction and relaxation leading to uh, uh, either they become over uh, uh, transit time is reduced leading to diarrhea or transit time is uh, increased leading to constipation <clears throat> sorry transit time if it is reduced it is going to cause constipation and transit time the in uh, increase it is going to cause diarrhea because a uh, large gut is going to absorb all of the water so this uh, hyperactiveness uh, or hypersensitivity we already discussed increased sensation in the response to stimuli so different psychosocial stresses like uh, uh, anxiety they can worse the ibs brain gut gut axis alteration in communication between enteric nervous system and the cns so if there is some disturbance in the stimuli from the cns to the enteric uh, 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 system that can cause uh, some uh, like if you have a patient with uh, Uh, myoclonic jerks or uh, patient with uh, uh, increased uh, motor stimuli that can lead to uh, fasciculations and myoclonic jerks and same if you have excessive enteric uh, stimulation from the cns through anxiety or other uh, uh, possible uh, related condition that can lead to over reactiveness or over sensitivity of the intestinal uh, uh, muscle muscles leading to uh constipation or diarrhea with ibs the post infectious usually chronic uh, grd acute infection like e coli or uh, antibiotics related to other bacteria chronic like grds is and ebs they are the usually tested infection for ibs patient with ibs can have a worsening of the symptom if they have superadic infection so post infectious gastroenteritis can be triggered uh, 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 can be fibbing factor for ibs and genetic if you have a family history of uh, ibs or if you have a, a history of uh, uh, anxiety depression or other uh, psychological uh, disorder psychomotor disorder that can even be high risk for for high tendency to get ibs okay what are the other uh, uh, 
factors like people who have a panic disorders or other psychosocial condition like I told you they can have a high risk for having Okay, that was the, some connection error, and uh, we'll uh, continue our uh, discussion. Okay, what else? The patient who have a history of uh, irritable bowel syndrome, and uh, I, I discuss these are the patients who have any history of sexual conditions, like history of IBS, or patient who have chronic fatigue syndrome, fibromyalgia, these are the uh, other causes which can lead to widespread muscle and soft tissue pain, tenderness and temporal medical. So these are the basically the condition who are chronic pain disorders and fatigue syndrome and uh, uh, history of uh, anxiety, stress, depression. These are the patients who have high risk of getting IBS. Okay, what are the common symptoms? This is very, very important. Must have experienced uh, a lot of students they experience uh, abdominal discomfort, especially lower abdominal pain. And there is a feeling of abdominal pain, discomfort, usually relieved by defecation. Or patient uh, may have associated altered stool form and frequency. So this is very, very important. Stool form, either they have a, a lumpy hard stool or they have a loose watery stool. So this is the very important. Either you have a IBS, predominant constipation, IBS with diarrhea, or IBS with mixed variety. So mixed variety is usually alternating uh, constipation and diarrhea. So alters stool form and frequency. That is uh, very important for uh, symptoms of IBS. The pain, patient may have a lower abdominal pain or discomfort and may have bloating and uh, abdominal distension. Abnormal bowel habits in period of constipation, alternating the diarrhea and constipation, and this is very important sense of incomplete evacuation. Patient usually feels he has to pass uh, uh, stool, and uh, when he goes to toilet, he uh, just have a passage of stool which are pellets-like, or sometimes they are hard or watery. And after uh, completing the uh, uh, evacuation. He comes back and feels there is some gases again and he wants to go again for the defecation. This is more important after food. You wake up early morning, you have one episode of uh, normal uh, stool in your past. And later on, after breakfast or after lunch, you have a frequency of stools. And this is the incomplete evacuation or uh, you have urgency. Urgency and other uh, symptoms of... So, Usually abdominal pain, distension, discomfort, bloating, incomplete evacuation, and uh, uh, urgency. And sometimes you feel there's a mucus per rectum. There's mucus in the stool or even you feel like a mucus. This is uh, uh, one of the symptoms. And the uh, worsening of symptoms after food, as I told you, uh, sometimes you feel like uh, there's a 3-4 stool pass after the food. You think there is... A, I have some food allergy or other pathology, but usually it is a hyper reactiveness or hypersensitivity of the intestine. They react to food and uh, they have a, a, a fast uh, uh, peristalsis and pushed out the stool because of the uh, food intolerance. 
So other symptoms they may have, we may have nausea and bladder. Some some of the patients have bladder discomfort and uh, frequency of uh, urination, or sometimes it is uh, urgency. So backache. It is another symptom. Symptoms are usually more than six months. So IBS is usually a chronic disease, and more than six months of symptomology. Patients usually present after one or two months of symptoms, or uh, sometime earlier. But usually, you will, if you ask the history, it will be of more than six months. And exacerbation by stress, menstruation, or gastroenteritis. Then we told you if you have a, a IBS and you have superadded uh, some. Uh, Food poisoning, from gastroenteritis, or infection, you can have worsening and exacerbation of IBS. Normally, if you have a symptoms of patient with abdominal distension, bloating, uh, uh, incomplete evacuation, or patient have uh, uh, urgency and uh, usually worsened by food, so these are the simple symptomology. After taking good history and clinical examination, if you examine these patients, they are usually normal. They don't have any uh, abnormal clinical signs. But sometimes you can have a germline abdominal tenderness, and uh, that is sometimes common because of the spastic colon. And uh, if you uh, are planning to go for sigmoidoscopy, that is the we'll discuss later on what are the uh, uh, investigation you would plan. But if insufflation of air during sigmoidoscopy may reproduce the pain, means if you uh, inject some uh, air during sigmoidoscopy, that is going to cause spasm and uh, abdominal pain and discomfort as in IBS. Okay. Positive history suggesting IBS would be if patient have a abdominal pain. Discomfort, bloating, constipation, and diarrhea. So identify your primary patient with symptoms of number one, abdominal pain. Number two, abdominal discomfort. They may have bloating. They may have constipation or diarrhea. Simple constipation, diarrhea, or alternative constipation and diarrhea. Look for the red flag. Red flag means any warning signs. If uh, physical examination is normal, laboratory tests are normal, and the patient have any red sign. I'll discuss the next slide will be a red sign. What are the patient you are suspecting IBS, but if they get any of these signs and symptoms and laboratory tests, they are the red alert. Because they are not simple IBS. They have other pathological disease, other brain, other organ disease of the intestine. So perform selective physical examination and test to rule out organ disease. So this is the patient who are red alert and make a positive diagnosis. So who are the patients which are red alert? Number one, age. If we are patient more than 40 years, they are in, not in teens and 20s, they're the most common age. Sometimes in children, they have a, a constipation diarrhea. But if a patient is above 40, don't label them IBS until unless you have investigated them thoroughly. Number two, if he stays less than six months, the acute onset of diarrhea, constipation, or other uh, associated problems, uh, think of uh, uh, any organic disorder. And anorexia, patient had loss of appetite. There is a history of weight loss. And patient wakes up at night. This is a very, very important. Wakes up at night because of abdominal pain or gets diarrhea. This is again what it is not IBS. Usually, nighttime pain, diarrhea, maybe peptic ulcer disease, maybe other disorders of the intestine, but the IBS is less likely. Mouth ulcers, ephthys ulceration, usually ulcerative colitis and other diseases, they have mouth ulceration, not IBS. Increase CRP and ESR. This is another acute phase proteins which are indicative of some pathological or organic, brain, organic uh, intestinal disorder rather than a simple IBS. Low HP, if the patient is having uh, uh, melina, he's having uh, bleeding pia, or uh, there is a stool for occult blood is positive because it is a IBS is a functional disorder. It will not cause any pathological process leading to low hemoglobin until unless patient uh, is uh, not at the end of diet. But it is again, you have to rule out other pathology rather than labeling him as IBS.
Tick disease and it's bleeding PR. So these are the 10 red alerts as we discuss in a patient with dyspepsia or dyspeptic disease. Uh, you are in class, I can ask uh, one of the students what are the alert or red sign in patient with dyspeptic disease. So they were number one, weight loss. Number two, history of dysphagia, difficulty in swallowing. Number two, if they were history of melina and they were history of weight loss. So these were the red alert in case of peptic acid disease and patient with IBS. You are suspecting IBS, but he has one of these red alerts things organic brain, organic uh, intestine disorder rather than IBS. So again, red flag number one history more than six months, history of weight loss, constant more than 40, 50 years age, and family history of any cancer or any tumor, or especially history of uh, uh, intestinal uh, vector CA or large gut CA or uh, even ovarian CA. That is most likely a organic disorder rather than IBS. So initial lab, you will ask for CBC, you will, if the HB is low, that means you are losing blood somewhere and it is a pathology uh, leading to GI bleed. It is not simple IBS. Leukocytosis, again, some infective cause and ESR and CRP rates and thyroid function. They also, in patient with thyroid toxicosis, even hypothyroidism, they can have a constipation with hypothyroidism and thyroid toxicosis leading to diarrhea. So these are the metabolic disorders, the organic disorders, which should be ruled out. Physically, patient should be normal, but if you have an abnormal physical sign, like bulge in the uh, epigastric area, some tumor, some mass in the abdomen, or uh, they, if you do PR, they use rectal bleed, and uh, there is some obstruction. So these are the red alerts which should make uh, thinking of uh, uh, some pathological process or uh, uh, organic uh, uh, disorder rather than simple IBS. Positive flexible spiritual or colonoscopy you can go for and take for biopsy if uh, that is required. So balance between uh, pathological process and uh, functional disorder like ABS. So functional would be young patient, typical symptoms, normal physical examination, normal investigation, and positive response to therapy. Like if you uh, plan uh, the uh, treatment of IBS, which we will discuss later on, it will most likely to be IBS. If red alert, if patient is old, atypical symptoms, Abnormal laboratory finding lies ESR, CRPR rays, HB is low, and uh, if you have a celiac serology positive or other tests are CA125, you can do for uh, CA uh, ovary. But if, if a family history of uh, any uh, neoplasia or any tumor, endoscopic findings and negative response to therapy and erratic follow up. So these are the balance you would say it is a functional disorder or it is an organic disorder in a patient who is having the acute onset of symptoms, who is old age, with all these clinical manifestations which are suggestive of some pathological process, the organic disorder rather than a functional disorder like IBS. So it is a very, very uh, important to rule out pathology or normal functional disorder of the intestinal motility. Again, we uh, have already uh, just, uh, I mentioned you types of uh, uh, IBS, either it is predominant constipation, predominant diarrhea, or alternative constipation and diarrhea, or sometimes it's a mixed variety. So these are normally four types of uh, IBS. The person tends to alternate constipation and normal stool. So usually there are uh, lumpy and hard stool in case of constipation. Diarrhea may be just a watery and loose water stool, and patients have typical urgency and cannot delay because water uh, is being pushed out. They usually some incontinence. If you have a watery diarrhea, they usually experience some incontinence and urgency, and they feel better and relaxed once they pass this stool. And uh, this is the uh, diarrhea predominant uh, IBS. If you have alternative constipation and diarrhea, that is the third variety, and fourth is a mixed type. So this is the normal uh, IBS if you have a patient with the constipation, predominant constipation, constipation, the food moves too slowly. As I told you, the transit time is very slow. And uh, slowly through the bowel, uh, this causes stool that hard to pass. Means the water is reabsorbed to the large intestine, large uh, gut, 
and the stool become hard in the diarrhea type your food moves too quickly through the bowel and that causes loose body stool so these are the two uh, main varieties uh, whether it is a constipated variety or it is a diarrhea variety or uh, mixed variety with alternative constipation and diarrhea okay how would you make a diagnosis again history and very very important so history the form of stool and the frequency they are very form means either they are constipated with the lumpy or hard stool or uh, they have a soft watery or uh, loose stools they are uh, 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 the form of stool so according to these criteria you must have certain signs and symptoms before a doctor diagnose as ibs the most important are abdominal pain discomfort lasting more than uh, two weeks or history of more than six months so doesn't have any uh, conjunctive uh, uh, attacks you need to at least two of the following number one uh, Rome two criteria that was uh, in 1999 when they make a diagnosis when you make a diagnosis of IBS the following uh, symptoms of IBS number one abnormal stool frequency and abnormal stool form either they are lumpy hard or loose water so stool frequency and the type of stool the form of stool is important abnormal stool passage straining urgency or feeling of incomplete evacuation so these are the important uh, uh, symptoms suggesting uh, of uh, ibs one abnormal stool frequency number two abnormal stool form whether they are constipated type or loose or uh, diarrhea type and abnormal stool passes patient may have straining urgency or feeling of incomplete evacuation and sometimes a mucus per rectum passage of mucus uh, uh, that is another uh, uh, diagnostic criteria and bloating or feeling of abdominal distension so these are the five major criteria in Rome 2 means if you have abdominal symptoms then more than two of these criteria that uh, uh, suggest IBS around three they revised the uh, 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 Rome 2 criteria. So, in this uh, criteria, if there is a recurrent abdominal pain or discomfort at least three days per month in last three months, so see if there is two or more of the following. So, this is a Rome 3 criteria, means your duration of uh, uh, illness and your uh, bowel uh, movement form and frequency means improvement with the defecation. Number one, onset associated with the change in frequency. Onset associated with change in form. So frequency and form is very important. The so criteria fulfilled if at last uh, for the last three months and symptom onset at least six months. So one, uh, the first criteria was uh, you have uh, uh, stool form and frequency and uh, you have uh, uh, symptom lasting for uh, 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 three months. And this is the revised criteria that is at least three days per month and last three months. So recurrent abdominal, so abdominal discomfort for three days lasting for uh, uh, last three months or more of two, number one, onset associated with change in frequency, onset associated with change in form, and if you have a, an improvement in the defecation. If you have a, at least three month symptoms, and onset in last six months and uh, discomfort means an uh, uh, uncomfortable sensation not described as pain so basically abdominal discomfort is uh, because of some uh, uh, vague uh, discomfort pain or uh, sensation of uh, uh, abnormality not well-being that is uh, sometimes because of the flexion uh, you can have abdominal uh, pain or uh, some discomfort so that you have a diagnostic criteria that falls a room two or that is uh, uh, the this slide or you have a room three criteria means three days per month at least for three months for more than two uh, with two of these uh, that fulfills the diagnostic criteria of IBS. okay the subtyping irritable bowel syndrome room Two committees classified IBS on the basis of expert opinion attempted to incorporate stool frequency, stool form, and defecation symptoms. So again, two things are very, very important. Number one, stool form, whether it is a hard, lumpy stools or they are 
lose water stool. This is stool form. Number two, stool frequency. And number three, they have a defecation like symptoms of uh, like abdominal discomfort and pain. In Rome 3, the circular fiction was revised to base solely on the stool consistency, which has been supported by recent studies. So circular fixation IBS is important because it is so it would likely to be associated with different treatment choices and methods. Basically, they have uh, revised the, the subtyping, but important is you go for uh, Rome 3 criteria. That means if you have a abdominal discomfort, you have a, a symptom at least three days per month and lasting for three months over with two or more of the following. Number one, you have improvement with defecation, onset social change in frequency, and onset social change in form. So frequency, form, whether you have a constipation, you have a diarrhea, or uh, urgency and improvement in improvement after defecation or incomplete evacuation. Okay, a change in frequency, this is another very, very important. A change in frequency of consisting of your stool, for example, you may change from having one normal form stool every day to three or more loose stool daily. Or you may have only one hard stool every three or four days. So it is a change in ball frequency. Either you have a constipated, uh, uh, constipated IBS or you have a loose uh, uh, diarrhea uh, IBS or a mixed variety. So straining urgency or feeling that you can't empty your bowel empty completely so that is a change in frequency and mucus in your stool and bloating of the blood distension so again four things are important number one abdominal pain and discomfort number two either it is a constipation or diarrhea variety or you have a staining urgency feeling you uh, there is incomplete evacuation and mucus per rectum okay so what are the that normally uh, investigation you would like to uh, do in your patient with suspected IBS and you want to rule out any organic intestinal disorder. So routinely you will go for CBC, RF, LFT, uh, thyroid function test, and you will go for stool examination and uh, uh, you could go for normal, uh, but additional if you want to make, if you have a red alert signs, or other uh, uh, suspicion of disease, then you can go for like, you can rule out celiac disease, you can rule out lactose intolerance, you can go for flexible or uh, uh, sigmoidoscopy or colonoscopy, just to make sure it is not inflammatory bowel disease or other uh, uh, pathology. So flexible sigmoidoscopy, this test examines the lower part of the colon with the uh, uh, flexible live tube or sigmoidoscope, you can take by few at the same time, and uh, you can see the uh, large gut, even uh, your sigmoid, to see the, 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 the any uh, pathological process or a simple functional disorder. CT scan or MRCP, you can go for uh, uh, to make any other uh, investigation. Colonoscopy, in some cases, your doctor may perform this as a diagnostic test. It is a flexible tube to be examined the entire length of the colon, especially to rule out any inflammatory bowel disease, uh, other uh, pathologies like uh, uh, diverticular disease, CA colon, or if you have a red alert sign. Otherwise, these pain investigations are simply done like CBC, uh, the routine investigation you will go for. Okay, but for the investigation, okay. These investigations should be guided by symptoms to exclude other diagnoses. As I told you, the red alert. You simple go for simple CBC, LFT, thyroid function test if you suspect uh, thyroid disorder. Or you will go for uh, uh, any, uh, norm, any abnormal uh, history or clinical signs. If patient in more than 50 years 
or any marker or red alert as I discussed in the previous 10 markers or all any disease you go for colonoscopy. If you have a low threshold for referring a family history of ovarian or bowel cancer, this is very important. Referring the patient and having a opinion from your other colleague if you are suspecting and some organic uh, intestinal disorder like bowel cancer or ovarian tumor, you can uh, uh, refer the patient to a gynecologist or other uh, colleague to uh, may, to help you if uh, the patient have any pathological disease. Excluding ovarian cancer may need a CA 125. If diarrhea is predominant, you can go for LFT, stool culture, B12 folate level, and endomycel antibody to rule out celiac disease. And patient may give a history of uh, uh, gluten enteropathy or patient may say after taking chapati or the, the gluten uh, uh, sensitivity he gets a diarrhea so that would be a very suggestive history in case of celiac disease and patient will be anemic or a deficiency fat soluble vitamins uh, a d e and k deficiency so this is a complex uh, malabsorption syndrome in case of celiac disease Due biopsy, if you suspect uh, celiac disease, you can go for due to biopsy to see the uh, various atrophy or uh, uh, other inflammatory process. Thyroid function has TSS, especially hypo and hyperthyroidism, may uh, present like uh, like uh, if you have a constipation or hypothyroidism and diarrhea with hyperthyroidism. Medium studies and rectal biopsy, if required, to rule out ulcerative colitis. GRDSE like GRDA, amoeba, and OVA cyst uh, in stool examination. If you are suspecting some post infectious or infective diarrhea, you can go for uh, 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 stool for uh, OVA cyst, parasite, and GRDA. Okay, one of the important uh, topic lactose intolerance that is uh, the uh, um, Lactase is an enzyme you need to digest the sugar found in dietary products, daily products. So this is the enzyme which is deficient in uh, almost 30% of uh, population in our part of the world. Overall, lactose intolerance is found in 20-25%. But in our uh, area, the lactose intolerance is very, very common. And patients usually get the foot in bloating, dyspepsia, and abdominal distension after taking milk because uh, they are unable to uh, digest and absorb the lactose that is the uh, and you need an enzyme which is deficient in these patients so if you don't produce this enzyme you may have a problem including abdominal pain gas and diarrhea to find out if this is the cause of your symptom your doctor may order a breath test okay hydrogen breath test can be done or you can add uh, milk aid is a, a drops they come in that contain lactase uh, you can put a 5 to 10 drop in a glass of water, milk, and uh, uh, that will uh, treat your uh, lactose intolerance. And uh, there may be allergy of uh, other uh, food items like uh, patient may have uh, allergies to onions, allergy to other uh, foods. They can be uh, ruled out on uh, excluding the uh, food products. Means if you have lactose intolerance, stop taking milk. Uh, if you are suspecting IBS, mixed with the uh, lactose intolerance stop uh, patient taking uh, ask the patient to stop take, uh, take milk don't take milk and they will improve uh, uh, their symptomatology if they are lactose intolerant otherwise ibs there is no uh, improvement okay so ibs as i told you it is a functional it is a motility disorder without any organic cause we have already discussed the symptomatology the clinical feature, the investigation, and lead alert signs, lead alert symptoms, very, very important. Ten red alerts, uh, as I told you, they are very, very important. And if you are satisfied the patient is IBS, then you go for uh, drugs and the diet, especially, and psychosocial interventions. So these are the very important aspect of the treatment. You can uh, consult your patient. It is a just motility disorder it is an, not organic disease it is not going to harm your uh, uh, health but sometimes lifestyle changes and a good diet and uh, avoiding the uh, uh, stress and uh, some uh, foods which can be uh, precipitating factors 
and uh, some exercise, even uh, exercise and uh, relaxation uh, exercises, they can help in improving the symptoms of IBS. So dietary modification, especially avoid food that triggers the symptom, such as uh, uh, if you have a excessive gas formation, food like lentils, legumes, beans, starch, coffee, and sorbitol. These are the, and even uh, uh, food uh, like uh, uh, cabbage and uh, all these things, they are uh, gas forming stools and a lot of gases are being formed and patients should avoid these uh, uh, foods. Okay, the uh, low uh, fermentable oleo uh, dimonosaccharides, these are the very important food they should be uh, reduced. Uh, are, they are the shortened carbohydrates that are truly absorbed in the small intestine. So, short map diet is very important because uh, uh, these carbohydrates they are uh, fermented, leading to gases, uh, gas production, and leading to bloating, distension, and patient becomes symptomatic. So, avoid taking short map diet. Fiber uh, supplementation may improve, especially isbolahas, not the fiber which is in. Uh, legumes and uh, brands and all that but uh, fiber especially ispola has will discuss later on that can improve the bulk forming agents that can relieve your diarrhea if okay if you have a constipated ibs especially the predominant constipation standard healthy diet bran and oats are better avoid insoluble fibers soluble fibers are now available which can be taken in a glass of water and they help in uh, uh, as a bulking agent and your stool is soft and bulky and it is passed uh, very nicely. Otherwise, if you have a uh, excessive uh, uh, saccharides, one, uh, they can lead to gas formation, especially carbohydrate which are non-absorbable, they lead to uh, gases and bloating and distension. Bisaccharide and sodium bicorporate uh, Escola has, I told you, can be is a non fermentable water soluble fiber, is better than lactulose. Lactulose again produces uh, H oils, which has uh, some tendency to because it is non absorbable carbohydrate uh, uh, that lead to gas formation. So that can even worse the IBS. So if you have a predominant diarrhea, avoid taking sorbitol sweeteners. Okay, sweeteners, they are non absorbable uh, carbohydrates and they can cause uh, gases and uh, try bulking agents like ismolahas and lopramide. So if you have a diarrhea, you can uh, take uh, ismolahas and lopramide two milligram uh, three to four times per day. If you have a colic and bloating, you have a intestinal spasm that can be treated by a mebivirin 135 milligram ATRD or elevirin uh, citrate 60 to 120 milligram ATRD a dicyclovirin. These are the all drugs which are antispasmodic. They prevent the quality. And probiotics are also part of the uh, treatment regime, which can improve your uh, uh, intestinal flora. And rifaxamine is a antibiotic that uh, uh, is uh, uh, now in uh, regime to treat patients who have excessive gases in your intestine and they have a bloating they can uh, be given rifaxamine that is non-absorbable antibiotic to improve your uh, gases. Psychosocial symptom and visceral hypersensitivity. So this is the aspect which is more important patients who are having panic attacks, who have anxiety, stress, and these are the patients who need uh, counseling to improve their symptoms. 50% of patients, they just get better on uh, uh, their psychosocial counseling and uh, uh, they are given a hope it is not a disease it is a just a guilty disorder and it may going to cause uh, uh, no harm to your body the cognitive behavior therapy very very important tricyclic antidepressant can be uh, used 10 to 50 milligram at night ssri like floxetine sertraline or uh, citrocellopram can be used so these are the uh, drugs which can modify your uh, gut brain uh, brain gut access to relax you and uh, have a, a, a relaxing effect and uh, less uh, anxiety and depression. New drugs which are uh, modulating the brain gut access like 5-hydroxytryptamine antagonist, aldosterone, 
uh, uh, sorry, aloe has been used with good uh, uh, results. So these are the basically regimes like uh, uh, good fiber diet uh, with uh, healthy uh, diet, less in carbohydrates, and the patients who are constipated can uh, use uh, 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 brands and oats, and uh, sometimes they can be given uh, isbola husk and uh, lopramide in case of diarrhea and antispasmodic sepsis. Maybe very in my experience, I have seen patients who have a spastic colon or they get abdominal cramps and pains. Memory is very, very effective. They can be given 135 milligram mebrivarine tablet uh, uh, two to three times per day. And if you have excessive gases, effectsamine is good for uh, gas formation. And the new drugs, there are a lot of trials. Uh, Elosterone, uh, this is 5 hydroxyl tetrabine antagonist, they can be used. So this is another uh, uh, treatment regime especially antispasmodics for patient with a diarrhea and uh, patient with uh, maybe brain is very active and patient who have uh, psychosocial anxiety, stress, and tricyclic antidepressants, amitriptyline and SSRI can be used and floxetine, seraphiline and floxetine, citalopram. These are the and probiotics. As I told you, probiotic, there is some evidence to score probiotics. They can improve your symptom, especially bloating and flatulence. And the patient with the serotonin antagonist and the 5 hydroxypeptamine can be used. And these are the new drugs which are usually given to, to patients who are uh, having uh, excessive gases and uh, uh, excessive motility disorders. Alastron. Al Alastron, this is a serotonin antagonist. And anti-motility agent, some the lopramide. If you have a excessive diarrhea and a patient can be used. Imodium is a simple uh, five milligram per day. You can be used uh, lopramide and serotonin antagonists at allosterone. Thank you very much. Uh, I hope uh, you will understand what is IBS and what is a pathological disease of the intestine. But uh, most of the patient with history uh, less than the, in the teen and twenties, no history of weight loss, no history of any other pathological process and uh, treat them as IBS. But if you have any red alert signs, try to uh, investigate them for any pathological disease. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, just give me your feedback if you have any query. Thank you, Allah Hafiz. Stay home and stay healthy. Okay.